I came to hospital initially uh, because I was suffering from, I guess, what you would call anorexia. And I was very, very unwell, very physically unwell and also very mentally unwell. So initially I was placed at the eating disorders unit that, that's on site here and subsequently moved to affective disorders which treats manic depression, bipolar, depressive conditions. So I guess I spent about two years here altogether. If you're in a psychiatric hospital, you often see people with very extreme facial expressions. And I found that fascinating and I wanted to sort of document it. But it worked into a kind of niche that I began to look at a black and white image, often a, quite an emaciated image. So that would tie in with the fact that I was diagnosed as suffering from an eating disorder at that time and I was very underweight. The problem started initially, um, I think, when I was about 16, just a fundamental dislike of myself. So I began to find ways to um, cause myself physical and mental pain, suffering, and that kind of took over. I think initially I saw myself, <laughs> and I was, it was a self-reflection. I was very unhappy and I was very frightened uh, and I just wanted to convey that. And then it became a kind of cipher, a way of getting something out that would communicate to other people some of the things that those with a variety of different mental health issues might go through. But the idea for me was about repetition. I've worked on the same image continually since I began occupational therapy and I, I stick to that, so that's what I do. I think the art over the years for me has, has helped me to find a sense of self-worth and self-purpose. Initially I, I was very much interested in just trying to put down how I felt and now I think a bit more about where the art can be placed, who it might appeal to. The art for me is something I just do and it can be five minutes at a table when I'm drinking a cup of tea or a beer and it can be something that I come to the studio to do and take time over. But it's an unconscious thing, and as soon as it becomes conscious, I'll lose the interest. It's something I do, and I don't try to think about it too much. I, I let the pencil or the charcoal or the, or the pen do the talking, or try to. When I was about 18, I was on my foundation course at Winchester School of Art, and I just had trouble coming to terms with who I was as a gay man. I just couldn't accept what I was, I wanted to be, at that time, I wanted to be normal. I'm not sure what normal was. When I went into hospital to have ECT treatment to make me normal, obviously they wouldn't let me have ECT treatment for that sort of thing, so I ended up a couple of weeks in hospital trying to sort myself out, talking to psychiatrists, but I wasn't open to talk about stuff at that stage. I produce two sorts of art. I produce art that actually reflects my childhood and my journey through mental health, being a service user and working in it. That tends to be quite illustrative, detailed, biographical work, and it's quite figurative. It often features my mum, and it features a perpetrator, which are the person that abused me when I was little so there's aspects of that person behind things in all my pictures. My mum used to appear quite a lot because I've always had to seek my mum's approval for being a gay man because she wasn't particularly happy about it. So it's exercising the ghosts of my mum having an influence on me. And my mum's quite a strong figure in my life, so she used to be in the front of my pictures, but now she's at the back. So I, I can see that my relationship with her has changed quite a bit of where I've 
where she's ended up in my work and she'll probably disappear at some time. My mum's um, the disapproving figure of my sexuality that worries and views me as a stereotypical gay man. But the only thing she ever said was, I hope you're not going to wear my dresses. Art oh, hasn't got to be all sort of consuming and dark. It can actually be really light and enjoyable and s still be to do with someone's recovery. My art from probably around the last five or six years is more to do with reflecting my journey and actually liking who I am rather than disliking who I am. My history is intertwined with art and really OCD as far back as the tender age of seven. I did a degree in, in illustration in uh, art. I've had episodic OCD, usually at points like at the, my degree where there was a lot of pressure and that's the sort of classic way that these things can present. The fundamental fault line as such with the disorder was triggered when I was seven with the death of my sister Vivian. She was three and a half and um, I sort of construed this rather imaginary way of dealing with, with fear, I think, because there was an awful lot of anxiety at that time. So one of the ways of escaping fear was to draw. My father used to tell me or suggest that I should draw a cartoon if I was feeling unhappy. So I got into the habit of endless cartoon drawing. <laughs> well, I was quite unhappy at the time, but, but it was a very good resource for, for channeling things and uh, feelings of, you know, fearful and, and negative nature. and and making them happy and all right somehow. You could somehow summarise the outcome in a positive way. As I went through teenage, I started to move out of having behavioural OCD, where I would look 49 times at, at each side of my dormitory bed at boarding school, and it switched to a cognitive sort of OCD, which is where you stop being able to reassure yourself by counting or or having to sort of arguing, endless circular arguing in my head and usually responding to a frightening thought that I would sort of spell cast. And uh, so I would be thrown usually by just having a random thought into months of horrible nervous debate. With OCD, you can't think your way out of it. You have to somehow jump ship. And if you can find something you love and focus, take it, it, you do have to take a risk of just doing that thing for, say, 10 minutes at first. One of the drawings that I'm doing today is um, a sketch of, of uh, well, it's actually rather sad, it was somebody going across a zebra crossing and she was cut sourcing the colours of the zebra crossing, only putting her hands on the white. And uh, she was obviously in a sort of ritual, having to feel she was compulsively feeling if I, I for some reason she had to do that as she crossed the zebra crossing. I presumed it was a sort of OCD act. I, you know, obviously I can't confirm that, but it looked so very classic. My father had a lovely thing because I lost him a few years ago and I still really miss him and he said, you know, it's like you've got this dragon behind you and it's this what-if dragon and it's just breathing the fire of doubt into everything, you know, and it can puff itself up to the most important thing when actually, you know, you can shrink it. Mm -hmm. 